welcome to Focus on AGRF 2023. I'm your host, Rudhima Shukla. In the upcoming half hour, we'll dissect this year's AGRF Summit agenda, revisit impactful past achievements, and explore multilateral collaborations. We'll also assess Africa's current food systems, noting enhancements, effective solutions, persistent gaps, and opportunities amidst climate change and population growth. Joining me today, we have Amat Pathe, the Managing Director of AGRF, and Sara Bago Bhunu, the Regional Director for East and Southern Africa at the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Welcome to both of you. So thank you very much, Anna. Well, thank you very much. Now to begin with, uh, Mr. Pathe, what is on agenda for this year's AGRF? It is a timely opportunity to stock take on progress on food system transformation, right. but also to reset the Africa con agenda on food system. So um, leaders, business leaders, delegate, um, farmers organization, uh, technician will gather here um, 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 next, next week to, to look at and assess the state of affairs of food system transformation on the continent, right. but only not to discuss strategies, but also to define decisive actions, uh, urgent action for the continent to recover from, you know, all these uh, current crises right. and rebuild the food system. Right. So the theme is recover, regenerate and act mm. and uh, a solution to food system transformation. And the goal is really to ensure that Africa plays leadership role on food system transformation, producing more locally enough and uh, create jobs, opportunities for youth and women. Before we get into the details of uh, the summit this year, and of course, taking stock of what has happened, if I can just get it, Sarah, on what is IFAD's contribution this year? What, how are you looking to engage? Well, thank you very much. Um, again, the, for having me, it's very interesting and exciting to participate in this conversation. According to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Africa imported about 65% of its food between 2016 and 2018 from outside the continent, amounting to about 35 billion, and this is expected to reach 110 billion by 2025. The International Fund for Agricultural Development wants to ensure that everyone in Africa has access to safe and nutritious food. By transforming food systems, we can boost agricultural productivity make food more affordable and reduce dependence on imports. Yes, Ms. Bunu, this has been discussed over and over again, how to become more self-reliant when it comes to food security. But before we go further, if I can bring back Mr. Parthe on, where do we stand today? So where do we stand today? I think uh, we do have, uh, you know, from, from one side, uh, some challenges, which we all know, um, you know, not producing enough uh, on the continent food and security and nutrition, climate crisis. Um, um, we have also a state of affairs in terms of trade between countries that is not necessarily at 100%. Mm. And we still have some barriers between uh, producing locally enough and trading when we have an uh, ecosystem that can help us and countries with huge opportunity. Right. So in that context now, how do we move to create jobs for those young people um, for a continent of one point, almost 1.4 billion. So this is where we are. That's why we are all coming together mm -hmm. to re reset the agenda. So the message is clear, pol political uh, Africa need to feed Africa, produce enough locally, trade between countries, create job opportunities for youth and women, and create wealth on the continent and export. Now to bring in uh, Ms. Bhunu on this, you spoke about investments in the sector, creating wealth, creating value, and resetting the agenda. Where do you see issues? Where do the challenges lie in resetting the agenda as a partner? I think land tenure systems must really, really change because without a change in land tenure systems, you can't really unlock the capital that's required. And you won't be able to really be able to crowd in these modern technologies that are also needed. Hmm. So uh, those are really low-hanging fruits that we need to look at. The technologies are on the shelf, but how do we get them into the hands of the young people we talked about? And we also mentioned women. This is, this is very key. We have to prioritize and invest in breaking down these types of barriers that actually uh, make it difficult for young people to access opportunities that are found in, food, in the food market.
and uh, equipping them with the me mechanics and technologies that they need to add value. And that's been the other area which has been really low. To Mr. Parthe, hey, what, what kind of changes are you seeing that are being made, promises more prioritizing food systems through policy in Africa? What kind of exchanges are happening and what are some key achievements, noted achievements that you can point out? Already there are a lot of change happening currently and obviously we have had a lot of uh, improvement in terms of production, but uh, in, on the continent since the independence up to now. There is a growing middle class, um, but at the same time also we have a huge population that is still poor, that just need to be fed. So from a, a, a progress perspective, policies have been set at the continental level. Uh, great policies, you have the cut up, um, you know, uh, but still countries are still struggling uh, to allocate enough uh, public budget to make sure that, uh, you know, those budget are going to agriculture and helping to transformation. So second is also agriculture still remain and all the food system uh, value chain remain traditional. So um, no value addition um, and this need to be upgraded and make sure that uh, agriculture, agri value system, uh, uh, food system value chain are also attractive to youth and women. That require number three, digitalization. It require also, um, you know, technologies. And uh, this is coming, but not enough still because it's expensive and uh so either they also um, um done outside the continent and imported and this um is still at the higher cost and which need to be now like at the continental level make sure that we are having these technologies cheap affordable to attract youth and women and make agriculture cool and sexy for all of them the fourth one is fi finance finance is still a big issue when it is available it's very expensive interest rate in the continent is around 20% on average. When it is very low, you still have also collateral, many kinds of things that are required for you to access, particularly when you are a young person or a woman. So these are also big issues that are in there. And uh, obviously, you know, the whole enabling environment and policies that are required from a government capacity building, it's not only money, but you need also the know-how and many who are interested by agriculture, trans food system transformation, uh, you know, uh, food, 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 food production, they don't necessarily have also the capacity, although it's a, a niche. So all these things need to come together. So at the speed, not only at the speed, which, which is currently, but it has to be accelerated before 2030, which is end of the agenda, uh, the SDGs. Of course, we know climate impact, uh, what it means for the agricultural sector. And when we speak about already an expensive financial environment, the risks are exacerbated by climate impact. How do you keep the private sector? Because without it, we already know public funds are short. How do you keep the private sector interested and also to ensure that the growth trajectory uh, remains uh, steady? We do have mechanisms, financial mechanisms now that we have actually tested within the African continent, looking at micro level insurance risk, but also looking at sovereign level insurance risk, uh, where uh, these types of micro insurance service products can actually insure and assure uh, small scale farmers who are the key actors in the production side of things that in the event of these climatic type shocks, that they can still get a return and they can still try to come back, even if um, they have been hard hit by unexpected floods and storms and cyclones that we see. So I think uh, the deployment and scaling up of these types of risk-based insurance mechanisms uh, are really helpful because of that uh, it, it, we discussed it already, we raised and the idea of de-risking. Is, is, is absolutely critical in, in agriculture. I think we also know when we've started testing different forms of, of farming that actually are irrigation based that reduce dependency on reed fed. And this again, uh, short term cycles, uh, horticultural crops uh, are highly lucrative, uh, farmed on a small scale commercial way. Uh, so I do see these as all types of methods. Uh, we have also been working with not only community groups, but also on the other climate weather type of information, which also 
um, scaling this up using digital technologies, SMS that Africans are so used to, all the mobile phones that we deploy and ensuring that we get the right type of weather information at the right time. And so that can even inform when we want to make the investment, if it's from a production perspective or when we want to actually harvest it. Uh, and when we strengthen and look at infrastructure differently, and we saw in the recent um, cyclone in Malawi that uh, some of the road and infrastructure investments uh, were able to weather those storms. And we were very happy to see when the water rescinded the cycle threading uh, that a number of the IFAD finance uh, roads, uh, rural roads in that context were resilient. And I think it's really about building in resilience and resilient strategies not only at production level, but throughout the value stream. Now, building resilience uh, in a warming planet, it's quite a challenge. Mr. Pathe, back to you now. Among other partners and collaborations that AGRF has, what is AGRF hoping to achieve this year? Any announcements that you're looking to make in terms of climate finance? More people coming on board? Uh, and give us a sneak peek uh, you know, before it actually comes through at the summit. Yeah, no, in, in fact, the announcement are good, but at the end of the day, uh, reality is something else. And it has been also, you know, the message of African leaders and also echoing smallholder farmers, those who are more impacted by climate change in rural areas, youth, women, and they have not created. So they're just a victim of this. Um, and we have seen in many parts of the continent, you know, people displaced or they have lost their assets. Um, and they have nothing. So commitment uh, since um, the, the, the you know many years now um, are there, but they are asking like you know this commitment of hundred billion a year, which is not yet met, uh, and uh, we are far away from those uh, those 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 commitment uh, need to be respected. Second is also um, uh, when those commitment are available, the resource access to resources are still uh, complicated. So today, um, obviously, when you want to access to those resources, whether you are government or even a private, you really need to, uh, you know, uh, go extra miles to make sure that uh, you are compliant with uh, the different uh, requirement to access. So I think it has to be faster, uh, much more easier uh, to, to access um, those resources. And I think that's also one of uh, our expectation from this one building and moving towards COP28. On adaptation, more resources also allocated to it. Uh, concessional funding, uh, not always, uh, you know, expensive resources or now uh, loans provided to address climate impact, but how these blended resources, uh, grant um, uh, cheap resources can be put, support developing countries, particularly Africa and particularly fragile countries to cope with climate change. Let me maybe start also with MSMEs. So the change we want to make, particularly when it comes to MSMEs looking for deal and investment, is to use our platform, which the agribusiness deal deal room, uh, uh, a year-round matchmaking platform, to crowdsource in uh, bankable, investable, uh, and, and financeable um, uh, deals that can be financed and uh, where you have uh, deal owners and, and investors meeting, but also development partners coming to support, particularly on the technical assistance and de-risking. So that's one, and uh, we are looking forward uh, to have it. In the past, we have 4,500 uh, businesses that were identified, of which more than a thousand were from the MSMEs uh, and, and a certain number of commitment, but this commitment now need to be translated in the reality. So that's one. Second is um, in this globalization, so crowdsourcing that money won't be only uh, from from for MSMEs, but also for government. So government deals, and this year we are also pioneering a legacy program from AGRF for the government of Tanzania of the the United Republic of Tanzania on um, you know um, build better tomorrow uh, flagship program. So uh, and 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 we are looking at a uh, uh, million billions of dollars uh, for the next coming years to support agribusiness um, development uh, on, on crop production, cash crop, fishery, livestock. So quite a number of sectors, but looking at it also from a sustainable manner. That will be showcased. And every year we will also continue and having those type of ship 
at each edge wherever which is a concrete outcome left behind after the forum ends. Uh, the third one uh, in terms of innovation obviously is also agritourism. So we have introduced um, a field visit and it brings also investors partners to see not only to be in rooms but also to see the landscape, the beauty of the country, land of Kilimanjaro, uh, the land of also um, Serengeti and, and Zanzibar. And uh, this year the climate summit uh, Africa Climate Summit is happening in uh, in 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 Kenya at this, the same week. So we'll end one 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 two days uh, before uh, our higher level summit. So we're expecting the conclusion from uh, Nairobi to feed in to our declaration on on the presidential summit on on Thursday and Friday, and then we take it to the COP, which will be also the position of Africa on adaptation but also on, on mitigation. And this will help also the continent to build the resilience of the food system and transform its seafood system uh, within the current uh, uh, global context. Right, Mr. Pate, actually, I'm going to come to, uh, we'll come to you again on the climate commitments that you're hoping uh, that are critical now more than ever. When we look at this, we know that women-led businesses, women-led all of these operations in the agro sector tend to face the biggest brunt of any calamity in this case, climate um, change. Uh, if you could tell us what is AGR specifically looking to change, uh, whether through policy, finance, or uh, knowledge, what, what is some critical change that you're looking to make and implement quickly uh, this time? Now, from AGRF, what we are already implementing from our strategic plan, which was recently approved uh, three months ago from 2023 to 2027, a five years a plan is number one, youth and women at the center of our action targeting. So deliberate intentional targeting of youth and women in whatever we do. So this year as an innovation and also as an intentional and deliberate way of doing business, we put youth and women a topic, but it's not just a topic on an agenda, but them being uh, you know, at the center and also acting. So uh, most of those one who are coming are young people and uh, youth, uh, MSMEs, youth-led uh, or, or women-led. So that's one. Second is also to give them voice. These platforms are platform to, to voice, um, you know, and echo the voice of young people and women. So they will be in all those different panels where you have expert leaders, government, to tell also their own stories and uh, to be uh, you know, at the center. We have a youth door, which will be dedicated to young people within this forum, which is an innovation and showcase technologies, but also show how they think and what they want. So the future and the future, uh, they're them. It's not like people who've been in the past, so they have to define it. And it's a, 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 common, a common one. So, uh, and, 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 and third is access to finance. The deal room, the way it is now, set is also from a ticket size. So you may be a young uh, person with a small business, a different from one who has a major business. So the idea is also to have meaningful actions targeted on businesses that are maybe 10,000 US dollars, because that's the only thing you're looking as compared to the one who is looking for 500,000 US dollars or a million dollars. So making sure that they are targeted and then also investors that are coming can go to deal rooms where you the matchmaking is much more faster quicker and then you speak to 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 each other thank you mr Bathe. Uh, now that you mentioned the deal room there has been some great success from that but how do partners like ifad come in uh, how uh, what is their role how instrumental are they to the success of these deals sarah uh, you know as agrf provides a platform what is how is IFAD actively engaging? Great question. And this is why we are a long-term partner, uh, I think, of the F AFCA Food Forum uh, since its inception. And uh, we have been part and parcel, uh, very close partners of this forum, uh, simply because of three or four things. Uh, firstly, the, the deal room provides us with an active uh, pipeline, which uh, is, continues to be challenging uh, for Africa to get a pipeline of investable uh, projects of investable businesses, whether they're SMEs, whether they're mainly cooperative businesses, whatever form they are in, these bankable businesses are actually quite thin. 
So the innovative uh, platform, which actually facilitates or the pitching of uh, uh, either businesses that want to scale up or real startups, whether they're in fintech and agritech, we are looking at this deal room as one of those sources to look for these investor more projects. Uh, so uh, the deal room, uh, coming back on the other side of the deal room, we also offers us the public type of investments that IFRA really works very closely with with governments on the rural transformation agenda. And there we are looking for very innovative programs that look at public-private partnerships, look at brokering business-to-business -business platforms uh, through our sovereign, largely sovereign investments. And there we can see and hear governments pitch their own projects, the projects that they have identified. And we are very keen from a country-to-country -country context. I'm looking very forward to hearing more about uh, what the government of Kenya, what the government of Tanzania, what the government of Uganda has identified bankable uh, businesses from um, a public, uh, a private uh, partnership uh, perspective. And uh, these offer us opportunities to really build on and crowd in other development actors to add value in other in, in other and many multiple ways. So I will, I will, I will stop yeah. here about what we get out of the you know, uh, uh, deal room, but I think it's really, uh, really both a, a public and very much very private uh, benefits. It seems to me that so much of it could be dealt with the right commitments, whether at the national or continental level. So taking this back to Mr. Parthay, what kind of commitments are you l hoping to gain from Africa Climate Week next week while uh, also AGRF continues? Um, and, you know, what do you want to take uh, to COP28 that would propel the food agenda further? I think it has been always clear from African negotiators to all COPs uh, 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 b beside this Africa uh, uh, Climate Week um, and, and, and actions, so that uh, the continent uh, is the less um, the polluter and, and that has contributed less also to global warming. Um, the contribution is less than 3% uh, um, uh, compared to the other, uh, the other continents. Second <clears throat> is also <clears throat> it's the most vulnerable, so the impact is huge and, uh, and, and unfortunately adaptation but also reacting to those shocks is quite complicated, given the economies uh, and fragile economies uh, across the continent. So the, the narrative has been very consistent that uh, the African continent still need to pay a leader, play a leadership role in terms of addressing climate change uh, uh, from within, but also a coalition globally. And to take away one very important point from uh, what you just shared was the fact that Africa needs to be in a more leadership position when it comes to the global climate agenda, especially looking at the fact that Africa barely has contributed or even continues to contribute to it. Now I want to take a closing remark from Sarah. What role does finance, according to you, the right kind of finance uh, in Africa, serve the purpose of putting Africa in a leadership position when negotiating global climate uh, actions? You know, I think I'd, I'd like to um, end my input by just uh, you know, talking about smart finance. Uh, I think we need to leverage a finance in a very different way in Africa. We know that there's hardly any finance we're getting for adaptation. Um, and at the same time, we are faced with capital markets that are underdeveloped. Uh, how can we leverage uh, concessional resources that are actually going to be targeted to create uh, those jobs, but to also create and unlock further capital? There's quite a lot of resources that are already in Africa, sitting in our pension funds, sitting in our commercial banks. How do we de-risk those and get them out? And then how do we create those businesses that can actually scale up? How do we target fintech and agri-tech that offer solutions to uh, agribusinesses uh, that could actually work. You know, while looking at the world, uh, the world is eyeing Africa. There's a lot of interest in Africa, a lot of attention on it. Some are saying the future is Africa. On that note, Mr. Pathe, if I can bring you uh, back for a closing comment on what is the future? So um, uh, my, my last comment would be Africa land of opportunities. So and, 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 and endless opportunities, uh, particularly wow. within the global context. So this opportunity can be sized. Um, uh, through agriculture, agri-food system. So uh, we have also the opportunity to transform our food system.
so Africa can feed Africa and must feed uh, Africa. So we have also the human capital needed, young people, uh, uh, brave women, um, and, and, and a vibrant population. So um, um, whenever we, 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 we talk about Africa also, we aim for quality. So that's possible. We can do it by 2030, and it has to be done. Mr. Pathe, we couldn't agree more, uh, our viewers and I. Uh, this is the time to take action, and uh, we can't wait any longer. It has to be done now. Thank you for sharing your insights on building food security in Africa through robust food systems and for exploring with us a future of opportunities and hopefully abundance. We look forward to the next week uh, at the summit and hope to keep these critical conversations going. This was a conversation with Amat Pathe, the Managing Director of AGRF, and Sara Bhuna. Regional Director for East and Southern Africa at the International Fund for Agricultural Development on focus on AGRF 2023 with Meera Dhamashukla.